Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. Drone Pilot Canada 2.6 has been released and offers an awesome new flight plan and site survey feature that is sure to save you a ton of time. Let's check it out. Let me begin with this. There have been a few questions about the future of Drone Pilot Canada with the release of the Nav Canada app. The only impact, I assure you, will be that the semi-automated authorization request feature will no longer be available in Drone Pilot Canada after June the 8th. Nav Canada has chosen to stop supporting their simple web interface, and unfortunately the software they purchased from Belgium has no comparable application interface for third parties. We are having discussions with Nav Canada to enable open integration, but this is not expected to be possible anytime soon. But even without this feature, Drone Pilot Canada is still the best game in town for safe and legal drone flying in Canada. Up to date Transport Canada and DJI map views, national and provincial parks, power lines, customizable checklists and procedures, one tap airspace assessments, the emergency button capability, documentation storage, device and team data synchronization, flight planning tools, a countrywide list of flight reviewers offering discounts, and much, much more. And now, with our latest release, you can produce flight plan and site survey documentation for those cases where you need them. But wait, what's the difference between a flight plan and a site survey? Well, a site survey is a safety evaluation of the area of your intended flight. It includes an airspace assessment, evaluation of ground hazards, weather considerations, and risks due to potential bystanders. I've got a really good video that goes into all the details of those four points, air, ground, weather, people. The link is up there. A flight plan, on the other hand, is basically a site survey plus additional information about your flight. When it's going to take place, who's involved, what drone are you using, what authorizations do you need, and things like that. Do you need a flight plan or site survey document for every flight you make? Probably not. In most cases, running through a good set of pre-flight checklist questions is absolutely sufficient but you will need an actual document for a flight review, or if you're submitting an SFOC, or if your company requires flight plans as part of their internal processes. So let's see how easy it is to prepare one using Drone Pilot Canada. So in my case, I'm going to plan a flight in Grimsby, Ontario to take some pictures of the Niagara Escarpment. Launching from the back end of this school field here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap in there to see what I'm getting myself into in ter terms of airspace. And we can see immediately that the only issue is that there's a registered aerodrome nearby. Um, so that's not a big deal. But I also note that I will have to do a DJI, DJI self unlock in order to fly there. So that's a good thing to take note of. All right. So let's do the flight plan. Press the dot menu create a flight plan. It indicates that's what you're going to do. You tap the map to define the launch point. So I'll do that. I'm going to, well, I'll just put it in the middle of that track and field area there. And it asks for confirmation. So we're going to do that. Uh, I'm going to be the pilot. I've invited Bill along to be my visual observer. I'm going to fly my matrice. Gives me the Latin longitude of my location. And you can always tap that to change to the other format, by the way. Um, maximum altitude default is 400 feet. I'm going to change my flight duration from 120 minutes to just 60 minutes. That's the operational flight length, not your actual time in the air. Um, and then hit continue. Next, you select the date of your, and time of your flight. So I'm going to pick there and, oh, I don't know, maybe, uh, 1 in the afternoon. All right, 
So at this point, you can enter a variety of, well, what I'll call administrative details about the flight. A mission identifier is the first field to fill out, and it's uh, something that a lot of companies use to track their flights. It's totally up to you how to use this, but the cool thing to know is that the mission ID will be added to the file name of your output file to help you keep track of these documents. So if you do a lot of flight plans, that'll be really handy. The next thing is the mission objective, which is fairly obvious. It's what you're going to be doing, whether it's a real estate shot or whatever. And by the way, I'll fill all these out at once later on, so you don't have to watch me horribly type on the screen. Um, the next one is client. In case you have a client, you can enter their particulars in that box. And then we offer you four fields for entering different kinds of authorization that you may need for your flight. The most common one is property owner permission, so we can start with that. And then if you need NAVCAN or SFOC uh, authorizations, you can uh, enter those. And we even give you another one called other auth, just in case, you know, so if you need uh, the, the kernel in command of the class F restricted zone you're flying over, you can enter your uh, reference to that email where he gave you your authorization. Or uh, what I like to do is put my DJI unlock uh, required notice in there so I don't forget that. Um, and then finally there's a notes field for anything else that you might feel useful to record about your flight and or the planning for your flight. And when you're done with all that you just hit continue. But just let me, give me a second here to fill all this out. Okay, so there's all my information. I hit continue. So at this point it, this is the last thing you need to do is to identify the details of the area of operation for your flight. So I hit OK and that big red blob there in the middle that is your launch site. Now I'm going to switch to satellite view and there we go that's a little better. You can see that that's where I, I plunked it but you know now I want to I realize that I'm looking at it I'm going to fly I'm going to launch closer to that parking lot over there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a long press on this marker. You can see it changes color and I can just move it. And that's going to be my launch point right beside the parking lot because I'm lazy. I'm just going to get out of the car and fly from there. It also gives me a better view straight across the field to the escarpment. So to define the flight area boundary, I just tap on the map and it gives me numbered markers with the and it will, re will record the lat long for each of these positions. And you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, it shows me the distance from my launch point to that marker. So I'm just gonna put down a few markers here. It doesn't have to be terribly precise. And uh, you can have up to 10, so it's fairly straightforward. And if, if you decide that you've kind of goofed up a bit, you can just do a long press on one of those and maybe move it in a bit or whatever. And if you really have screwed up really badly, there's a button in the top right here to clear the boundary and start again. So when you're finished, you can hit the complete flight area boundary and it will join uh, dot one to the, your last dot. And now you can add points of interest. A point of interest is like a hazard or maybe the target for your site or anything else you want to mark on the map. So again, I'm just going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to mark over here uh, that the school and watch for people. Okay, and then over here, down near the cliff edge, I'm going to put a mark in it, and it can be outside of your, your uh, flight area, by the way. And this is going to be cliff. And it's a good idea if you're putting um, hazards in to indicate like ground hazards, it's a good idea to mark their height. So it's about, I don't know, 500 feet. I probably should have done my homework to figure out. But anyway, I'll mark it like that, just so that I know there's a cliff there, and I better be careful. And you can put any number of points of interest down like that. And again, you could move them or clear them if you really mess it up. All right. And when you're done all that, 
you can hit finalize flight plan and it goes off and does some math and figuring out and it will be generating a PDF file for you and then it offers and here it's done it offers you all sorts of options in terms of apps that you can attach it to or use to to send to people or anything like that I like to just send it as a Gmail uh, or an email to you know who are, I'm, in this case I'm just gonna send it to myself alright so now let's look at see what is inside that PDF that just got generated alright so here's the PDF it tells you when it was prepared date and time and what version of the app uh, was used to do that um, gives you all your administrative information in terms of the mission ID and client and things that you typed in gives you the date and time in both local and uh, Zulu time for your flight the duration that you told it it gives you the, the uh, flight location in terms of an address and Latin long again in both both uh, formats the elevation above sea level of the location and the maximum altitude that you have indicated you're going to use for the pilot in command it gives the name the certificate number uh, the level email all that kind of stuff the phone number and your crew will be listed over here so here's William uh, Shatner he uh, dropped in for for a visit and his phone number that's not a phone number hang on Bill you naughty guy anyway uh, here here's the, <laughs> the aircraft I'll be flying the multi-copter huge is the markings um, and my authorizations that I had typed in and my notes it also generates a weather forecast for the date of the of the flight if the um, the date is more than 15 days from the current date it, it advises you to uh, consult with longer term forecasts because we don't have forecasts beyond 15 days on the next page is a map of your area of operations there are two different formats here there is first of all a roadmap view and there you can see all the stuff that I entered and a satellite view and then a context view here at uh, a different scale and the location of the flight you can just see it there in the corner there or in the middle I mean uh, the red dot and it allows you to see the the larger context in terms of aerodromes and things like that all right um, and then underneath the map is the latitude latitude longitude and elevation of every one of those points as well as the distance from the launch point so you can see all of that information down here and then on the right hand side the points of interest with your notes school watch for people cliff 500 feet that kind of stuff and you can see the the lettered points of interest are shown here corresponding to the the letters on the map the next page is an airspace assessment for the location of your flight and it starts with an emergency number for the area control center this is just in case of a flyaway. Now I know you're using the Drone Pilot Canada and you have the emergency button which will have this number as well as the numbers for all the nearby aerodromes, but sometimes it's handy just to have it right there in front of you. So there it is. Gives you the airspace class. In this case, I'm in class G airspace. If you happen to be in controlled airspace, it would give you additional information about that. This is exactly the airspace assessment that you can get using one, the, the one-touch airspace assessment from, from within the app. It'll list out any certified or military aerodromes and certified heliports. In this case, there are none. Uh, and then uh, after that, all of the aerodromes of any kind within 10 nautical miles in increasing range. So this is the closest one, followed by this one, and then this one. And in each of those, as usual, it tells you the kind of airport, uh, and the contact name and uh, and phone numbers as well as the distance and heading and last but not least on the last page are any NOTAMs that are in effect for the closest aerodrome to your flight so in this case there are three NOTAMs that are listed close to the Grimsby Air Park oh and we scan the NOTAM text for drone related keywords like well drone RPA, RPAS, unmanned, or UAV. If we find any of those, we flag that, that NOTAM as drone related with the words drone related over on the left. We try to keep things simple. 
All right, there we go. That's it, that's all, the flight plan. So there you have it. The overall PDF is a perfect site survey document for a flight review or a perfect flight plan for your boss and ridiculously easy for you to prepare and simple to understand. I'm sure you'll love it. Thanks for watching. Safe and happy flying.